Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Dimitri Lylan, and I'm excited to be back with Eric. Eric, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Dimitri. Yeah, so we're going to talk about SQL Server Data Tools today, one of my favorite topics. I've been on with Kevin. You've been on uh, right. this show with Robert, right, talking about this. And today, we're going to talk about the DevOps pipeline. So why don't you, why don't you exactly. give us some details? Yeah, today, uh, the main topic is about uh, the SQL Server and the SQL Database on Azure, CI-CD, in DevOps pipeline. So uh, to get there, we are going to start with uh, the database development approach, which is a, a migration-based approach, which is more traditional, and state-based database approach. And then uh, we will jump into CI/CD. Most of this session, we'll go through. Uh, we will run it uh, uh, over demos so that they can be more exciting. Yeah, we yeah, love that's demos. A, that's the plan for today. Sounds good. So just to set the context for people a little bit more, just in case you know maybe some of you aren't as familiar with all this technology and all the acronyms here. Yeah. So we're going to specifically look at how a Visual Studio, let's say Visual Studio 2017 developer, using exactly. the SQL Server data tools, right, can yes. use you know all this technology that we have for right. the developer in Visual Studio to let them work with SQL. Mm -hmm. SQL as part of you know their source control, their, their team oriented development, yeah. and specifically the DevOps pipeline, which yeah. is all the stuff that you're going to exactly. use in the demo. Exactly. Yeah, you got it right. Awesome. So, Let's start with uh, then uh, what is the, uh, the migration-based and state-based? What's the key difference? Yeah. So the key difference between those two approaches is about what is the system of truth for your database. Mm -hmm. In migration-based uh, 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 development, your live database is the system of truth. In Been there. <laughs> all right, so I will get there. So yeah. uh, state-based uh, database development, your database source code is the system of truth. Mm -hmm. So let's get uh, uh, to the demo yeah. and take a look at what is really mean, right, in in, uh, in this session. Awesome. Let's take a look. Right. Okay. So let me switch to uh, uh, application. This is my demo application. It's called uh, the Banjo Works directory, and uh, let's put uh, on a hat as an application developer today. Okay. Awesome. So uh, we are not uh, like a, a, a professional DBAs or. We are application developers. Sure. So, so, this, so uh, what, what kind of app is it? Like, is it yeah, this one is an uh, uh, Azure web app service run, uh, using uh, a SQL database on Azure. Mm -hmm. So basically, what it does is that it pulls down the employee information, and like a phone book. Mm -hmm. And if you click uh, uh, one of the, uh, the employee information, it shows the detail of that employee. Sure. Now, if you take a look at that, there are sensitive informations there, right? Mm -hmm. So as a developer, I start my day by looking at my work. So uh, if I uh, expand it, then the task for today is that make sensitive, uh, mask sensitive employee information. So we are showing uh, like a phone number and then the emails. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so ask is mask it, hide it. Sure, right? very, so, very common ask. Yeah, exactly. So uh, in uh, SQL Server 2016, there is a great feature called the dynamic data masking, my favorite uh, demo scenario, mm -hmm. that you can uh, really easily mask any sensitive information without you know, making any single line of change in your application. Right. So, so uh, the let's database say, handles all the masking in your application, exactly. just gets the data back and displays it however we, we choose the right. mask to be applied. Right. Cool. So uh, let's look at the, uh, <coughs> the uh, migration-based uh, approach first. Ever since uh, SQL language was invented back in 1970, database developers have lived in the world of uh, writing and executing create alter, and drop statements yes. and then, uh, uh, for, for making changes to your database, right? Um, and then emailing those scripts to your friends and the team yeah, that's right. <laughs> to run locally. That's right. And then until you release the first version, it's straightforward. You can uh, do uh, you know, uh, uh, all the dev actions. But once you have the first, re first version uh, released to the public, then uh, you have uh, many uh, users using your app and services day and night. Mm -hmm. and then a change like this is business of altering your live database. So, yeah. so let's take a look at what it is. So first, let's take a look at what we have. I will execute it against the, uh, I'm connecting to my live database, which is uh, running on local, which is my dev environment. Mm -hmm. So I connect. So you get SQL Server 2016 installed locally. Right, right. Cool. I'm running uh, uh, SQL Server 2016 uh, locally as a dev, dev environment, which is mm -hmm. my uh, currently uh, the live data, right? right? And I execute it. As you see, emails are all shown uh, very clearly, right? Yeah. So the key thing is that with the dynamic data masking in SQL Server 2016, it's really simple code change like this. There's two lines of code, mm -hmm. and uh, I will execute it. Boom. Two errors, right? right? So it's... A, your database is live, uh, live, uh, the system of truth. Now, as a developer, 
I need to understand what's in there exactly, mm -hmm. right? And then I can understand what is this address, right? Right now, what message is telling us is that the employee view has dependency on the table that I modify. Mm -hmm. And also, there are other objects that is actually using this table at the same time. So, so to figure out as a you know, developer in the migration approach, either you need to get a great tool to uh, figure this out, or right. you have, a, have to have a great knowledge about your uh, lab database already. Yeah. Or you have to ask around your friends and experts. <laughs> or keep trying to alter until you right. run out of error right. messages. So, <laughs> so that's kind of a, you know, a typical approach. Uh, and uh, let's, let's do that in the state-based approach. And then let's see the difference there, right? Mm -hmm. OK, so um, in state-based, as I mentioned, I'm going to Solution Explorer. Everything is based on source code. That's your system of truth, not mm -hmm. the live database. Uh, what is most natural way as an application developer uh, to make a changes or or uh, uh, drop it or or creating a new version of application, right? Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at before we go jump into a, a database side. Let's take a look at the application. So I have a this is my web application code mm -hmm. it's written in C sharp, and uh, there is a, a, a v employee model class, right? right? So let's say if you don't need this property, what you do is you delete it mm -hmm. on the source code file. If you want to modify, then you modify the changes on your source code file. Right. That's what you do. And uh, that's now you have a uh, you know, new state of your application. And then you build it, test it, and you install it. Mm -hmm. right? As, uh, and yeah. Or deploy to uh, the, the web app service. Right? Sure. So that's the, uh, uh, the practice. You can do the exact same thing. Let me just declare this one. Don't save it. If you go to uh, a database project, SSTT database project, which is all state-based, then you do the exact same thing. All your database objects are captured in the project as a source code. Right, and SSTT is smart enough for those that maybe haven't tried it in a while. I mean, it, it knows the relationship between it. It really is kind of rich intelligence, yep. friendly environment. It's part of your source control, part of your project. Right. And uh, get latest on your developer friend next door to you. Next, next desk over, we'll, yep. we'll get the changes you're making here. So exactly. it's, a, it's a great way to collaborate, uh, but just still some challenges you got to yep. work through. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's make the same change, like altering it. Mm -hmm. Now here, likewise, uh, you uh, modify the class in your C or Java. In state-based, you're not dealing with alter business. Mm -hmm. It's always uh, your uh, definition of a table, right. which is defined and created. You can always look at the, uh, uh, your table in whole a holistic uh, view. Right. You, you, you make a change. It knows you made the change. You're deploying it. It will, it will alter accordingly. It doesn't right. require you to create alter statements. Exactly. That's what we're trying so to So just to declare mm -hmm. the state where your table should be, like right. this, right? So, so uh, in this case, I made a change, exact the same change on the definition itself, and then I go mm -hmm. build. Okay. So first, we showed like kind of the ad hoc capability of SSDT from Visual Studio to run SQL code, right? So you mm -hmm. ran some SQL code just to right. demonstrate that that wasn't as straightforward as right. change as you find, and now right. you're doing it more of like the way we would recommend people do this in this kind of in approach. state based, yeah, yeah state based, right. right. So there, the build was successful. There was no error. Mm -hmm. And then, likewise, uh, you're installing app. But you can install or publish, if you will, uh, to your live database, which is a target. So, mm -hmm. so uh, like your, dev, your dev database, let's say your common that's right. dev database. The concept is that uh, you're making your target, whatever it is, to the state of your source code that you just uh, developed and verified. Mm -hmm. That's basically the, uh, the key concept. So uh, to make it easy, I made a. a uh, the publish profile here. So I can just double click, that goes to my local database, mm -hmm. and I run it. Right. Alternatively, here, I love the fact that you can generate the script if you can't. Yeah. Or you, yeah. let's say you don't want to run until you look at what the changes are that you, it's yeah. generating. Exactly. I'll show you that one. Yeah. So, um, error. Okay. Let me quickly show. Probably we have to uh, do it again. Uh, it's a data loss case. So just a second. It's trying to protect us. <laughs> yeah.
All right, this is the one. So what we just showed here is actually, you know, when you get an error like that from SSDT, if you're if you're confident that the change is something you want to go through, especially like in a in a dev environment, right? Oh, I see. In, in production, you right. think think about this a little bit harder. <laughs> All right. So you want to know well, what happened? Actually, yeah. uh, this is my fault. I was uh, kind of uh, prepping the demo and then uh, practicing it mm -hmm. on my local machine, and. Uh, I actually made a really dangerous changes at the same time that could cause the data loss in a situation. Yeah. So it actually uh, SSD uh, detected smartly mm -hmm. and stopped it uh, because there is a possible uh, uh, the error of losing your data, right? So uh, uh, if we go to uh, the publish setting, mm -hmm. and there is a one, uh, yep. mm, the this block one, incremental, log yeah. incremental uh, deployment if data loss might occur, it was checked. Mm -hmm. So it was basically uh, 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 blocking it. Yeah, so and that's, that that's the default it. setting, right? That the is default, default to be setting. most protective. That is right. So I was not expecting, so that's why I was, oh, what's happening yeah. here? But uh, <laughs> that's actually a legit feature, and mm -hmm. it's a great feature that uh, you can, we can always guarantee that uh, you don't have a data loss. And at least you have to, like me, uh, you have to figure out, oh, wait a second, wait a second, the data loss uh, you know, is, uh, can yeah. happen, so I have to check it out. So my change was just you know, uh, uh, the changing the column size here and there. Yeah. That was my experiment before this session. So uh, that's what happened. So, no so that's we, we don't have bugs, folks. We, we show features. That's, that's right. just we have in features. the demo. demo <laughs> yeah, it was part of the demo. Right? <laughs> unexpected part of the demo. And unexpected, right. Like so it. let's run it again. So, uh, so actually, it's a, another demo of uh, data protection. I, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting, so I was like, uh, you know, a little bit uh, confused. But yes, there's a, a part of the uh, SSDT feature. Now it is successful. So um, let's go back to our script. And I love the fact that it shows you the, the various states of publish, right? So you can exactly. see what happened before versus what succeeded now. Exactly. Um, I, I always find it irritating when the tool kind of takes away the previous state, and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, what did happen? You know, I've, mm -hmm. maybe you need to email somebody about that, uh, even yeah. though it worked for you now locally. Yeah. So that's great. I will show you that part uh, after seeing the, uh, the result. So All right. now I'm uh, running uh, my query as a suspicious user mm -hmm. and see what happens with a, a dynamic data masking. If you take a look at here, it's all masked. Right. right? So, the, so the data the is still there, but, but SQL Server is just taking one of its capabilities, masking right. it, and you as this user with this level of access, with this query, that's what you're going to get, and exactly. therefore an app could get exactly. the same data. Uh, the same here, close yeah. works, and the index is defined on this field. It all, all works you know, uh, exactly as is. That's the dynamic data masking, uh, the great feature. So let's see then how it worked. Uh, before, in a, you know, with just a simple auto statement, it was not working, right? But yeah. uh, with the statement, uh, state base, that it worked. So let's take a look at the preview, what happened. Basically, uh, SSTT detected that uh, uh, the, the email address table has dependencies on the many others, like uh, uh, employee view has a schema binding here. You, have, you see that uh, mm -hmm. I will um, make it bigger. Yeah. It has a schema binding. And then uh, the employee, uh, the view itself, has a dependency with uh, many other stuff here, mm -hmm. right? So to make that the simple change work in migration way, I will show you the uh, the script. Yeah, and so before we showed you like the, the preview of what the changes were. That's why there was no co you know coloring of the IntelliSense. You know, it wasn't code. And here's the actual code it generated. Exactly. The other one is just a summary report. Yeah, summary report. Right. right. And then the, this is actual code that ran against mm -hmm. the target database based on your state in project. Right. Right. So it's a bunch of this code had it to be executed mm -hmm. to make those a simple also statement uh, the successful. So using uh, SSTT powered by uh, uh, DAGFX, uh, it intelligently figures out all these dependencies and schema bindings and index matter, and it generates, produces the, uh, the necessary statistical scripts when you deploy your uh, changes to target database. So depends on your target database version. It can be a different version. It has different you know, uh, uh, the content in it, like in terms of schema, then it produces different schema that changes your database to the state of your source code, right. which is your system of truth. Right. That's a state-based. Uh, so, so we just covered the basic, right? That's the difference between migration versus uh, state-based database uh, development. Mm -hmm. And the state-based based development is very natural to application developer because that's the way that application developers change their application code. Right. right? So if you're, if you're changing C-sharp, that's what you expect. You wouldn't expect in anything else kind of exactly. as a process. You would want to just 
heavy source could be the truth and exactly. your published version, right, is just yep. executable. Database in this case is being treated as an executable, so to speak, exactly. right? And, and like this is the way that I worked with SSDT in a couple of projects mm -hmm. that I worked on last. And yeah. it works great even, even in a large team setting. So mm -hmm. we had like mm -hmm. 25 devs and everybody could just get up and yeah. running from get file, get latest version from source right. control do this sort of change to their local database, even if they went on vacation mm -hmm. for a week mm -hmm. or two, right? Yeah. They, they weren't asking for scripts from us. Right. Um, and then we can, we can actually leverage the script to change other environments, like mm -hmm. the common mm -hmm. you know, dev database or whatever. Right. So this, this process, like I, I can testify to, it works really well. Mm -hmm. Thank First you. Experience. Yeah, that's it. I totally agree on that one. So now, we just to cover the basics, right? Mm -hmm. Let's jump into a CI-CD pipeline, right? right. Database CI-CD. Nowadays, uh, 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 the, uh, the Continuous integration and continuous deployment is common practice for any serious application development project. Everybody uh, just uses it. Became as a, you know a, the standard and then uh, something that you must follow. Uh, if you develop your database in state-based using project, then mm -hmm. it naturally goes to database CI/CD pipeline because there is no much difference between your application CI/CD right. practice versus database CI-CD practice in this matter. That, that's the main reason that I showed you application change first and then shows you the, uh, the database change. It's basically the same, right? Yeah, it's just but CI-CD is an automation, automated version of what we just exactly, demonstrated. Exactly, exactly. So let's take a look at then um, uh, what you do is that in application development, what you do is that you make a change and then you check in. So well, let's check in. So it's, uh, I did it uh, in the channel 9, VS Toolbox. Demo. I will just you, write it. You like just that. broke all the rules about how do you comment <laughs> your check-ins, but it's okay. We'll right. let you, for let this you get one, away with this one. Yeah, for this one, I will just get rid of it. It was kind of a you know a, the demo error, right? Sure. And uh, this is the main change. And uh, what you do is that uh, you can commit. I will just do it. Commit all. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I have a one commit, so I can push it. That's common practice for any any developer does, right? Yep. Commit it and push it. And also on the um, the source control. You create a pool request, and then uh, we're gonna I'm gonna just skip that part. But uh, that's the same process that you do uh, on database uh, development yeah. using project. Yeah, it's not specific to what you're demoing, so to totally, yeah, exactly. totally get it. So now I checked it in, right? Yeah. Then if I go to Visual Studio Team Services and build, then you see here the Trigger new the build, build is yeah. automatically triggered. It's now happening. The good thing is that. Visual Studio Team Service has a great CI/CD feature, uh, and, uh, and it has all the database CI/CD feature built in as well. And then it's it's greatly integrated with the Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. So by just applying the same concept of uh, using the, uh, the application CI/CD using Visual Studio and the Visual Studio Team Service, then it just flows through the uh, database development as well. That's basically what I'm demoing now. So the new build is uh, triggered automatically, and it's just uh, running. So while it's running, it would just take a, in a couple of minutes, and let's take a look at uh, what is in there. So, so for somebody that might actually not be familiar with what we're demoing here, this is uh, Visual Studio Visual Team, Services. Team Services. Yeah, so right. we're we're in that portal. Has a you know we can view some some of this data for Visual Studio, yeah. but then we can get the richest set of data for exactly. the portal itself. So let me uh, then I explain a little bit for people who are not familiar. The so Visual T Studio Team Service is like uh, your uh, the source control uh, repository, mm -hmm. and then the command center to run the CI/CD pipeline and all those goodies, right? So yeah. that's uh, uh, how I understand it from the database developer perspective. So if you go to code, you saw all the uh, code that is running on the Visual Studio, but it's uh, the source is basically on um, here. Uh, it was on the, yeah pull request. So yeah. So it was uh, all the source code is here. So if you're running in a, in a team environment, then, then everybody can just you know, uh, clone mm -hmm. this uh, repository to local, develop it, and check in. That's, uh, that's uh, what you can do. It's, uh, there is no difference between any other right? the application development. Yep. And then uh, standard, it yeah. has uh, uh, the flow of a build and release. And the flow, those are mainly two things that uh, we are uh, demoing today. And uh, we have those. So that's kind of a very, uh, uh, the, uh, nutshell, high-level version of what it is. So, awesome. so let me go so back. So our build to succeeded here. It shows, right. So this one was the one, and uh, it already passed, right? So mm -hmm. I will quickly take a, uh, show you how simple it is to just, uh, you know, have CI build, you know, going with the VSTS, SSDT, and Visual Studio. 
Great. So, so the guest source is just the you know the common template. All those tasks are defined in template like this, right? So for database development, what you care about is that this one. These are all the common uh, steps that uh, you you do, like uh, defining your the location of your source, mm -hmm. and if you have a, a application running well, web app, in my case. It has a NuGet dependency. Right, it has to so, do store any dependencies yeah, on the server side, do the right. build. And this is the, the, the key thing. SSDT database project uh, has a built-in uh, support from MS build. So you can just build the project using MS build. Okay, so there's nothing special. You're not there's installing additional special. tools. It's just part Everything of the build built process. In, yeah. So cool. you can just, uh, you know, any other uh, app application uh, in a build, application build, you can just, uh, you know, specify what is your, uh, the solution name. And that's it, basically. Mm -hmm. And this one is uh, something specific for SSDT. If you uh, define this uh, parameter, oh, well, let's make it bigger. And then instead of using um, a disk uh, for temporary uh, the artifacts, mm -hmm. while it's kind of building and then the, the, the analyzing your data, uh, source, database mm -hmm. source, it uses memory. D do you need to um, add this parameter, or is this something you're adding? It's, a, it's you optional, wanna... and it makes things much faster. Ah, so, so you optimize the, right. the so you made the build faster, but you yes. you manually went in here and added this argument. So folks, that don't right. add it. It still works, it but works. it'll be slower in the build pipeline. Yeah, that is right. Got it. And that's basically, and um, this one is also a common thing that after the artifacts are created from the build, mm -hmm. then you're basically uh, publishing or copying those artifacts to uh, the, the server so that the later on the release process can uh, uh, get those artifacts and use it, right? right. So it's a common, common practice for, common steps for any, any uh, application projects. Right. Okay, that's basically it. And uh, um, you can see all the whole history of your build operation for, for yourself and your team members and everything. If I click one of the build, now it runs, right? And if you take a look at the deployment, the, the key thing is that whenever there's a new build successfully finished, then continuous deployment occurs. That right. means it picks up the, the build artifacts and then deploy it, it to uh, uh, your target location. It can be your production, it can be your test. Right. Anything like this. So, yeah. so in this pipeline, two, two steps got to finish successfully. It's got to build it all successfully yeah. and it's going to push it all successfully. That is correct. If I go to the release, then probably it's already finished, and I will show you. So the, I had to set up like a f workflow. Mm -hmm. uh, in this workflow, what is, is that? The first one is uh, deploying that the database to user acceptance test. Let's just go straight to production. I, I mean, what, what can go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a, it's more like a, you know, a, uh, like a safety net <laughs> to have a test in a deployment and then have some integration test or or the user acceptance test, and if, it, if everything is good, then Visual Studio Team Service has like a sign-off process. So uh, if the, uh, the authorized person can go and sign off, then, mm -hmm. then production deployment occurs automatically as well. So, yeah. so that's basically the good thing about- so If you're uh, not building a demo app, you, you, you want multiple steps. Right. That's the reality. Right, so- uh, Unless you're completely crazy, but <laughs> I've seen so all things. Deployment is even more uh, simpler, actually. So uh, I have a two tasks, but the, the, you can choose one or the other. Mm -hmm. uh, Visual Studio Team Service has a task, built-in task, that is called a Deploy Azure SQL Backpack. Mm -hmm. Backpack is the artifact of the, uh, the project uh, build. Right? right, so that, that was the output of, of the build process, and, uh, and you knowing that that's part of something you wanted to get released during right. this pipeline, you went in here and I'm assuming you had to manually add the task, that but it was right. a template that you already had. So you, as, uh, so, um, mm -hmm. VSTS knows about this kind of task, yeah. but you still have to configure it. So, that's, that's something right. people need to be aware of. Right. So, configuration is a very simple. I will uh, highlight this part. Mm -hmm. So, if you take a look at, uh, because it's a deployment to uh, a server, a SQL server, uh, Azure SQL, SQL server database. or SQL yeah. database on Azure. Yeah. So, uh, the key thing is the connection part, right? Right. So, these are the connection strings and the, your admin. The mm -hmm. good thing is that for password, uh, but it's protected. So it's uh, protected through variables. So if I go to variable, you can define your variable mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, actually hide it. Yeah, uh, during like demos it. like this, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. nobody sees your password. Right. So uh, that's a good thing about that one. And yeah. then the rest of them is pretty good and uh, they're simple. Mm -hmm. That's the key thing for your uh, specific environment. And the rest of them is the same thing, just the, in the location of uh, uh, the, the DACPAC file. So uh, it's kind of a, uh, uh, template. So, for a database uh, project, 
probably this is kind of a, a same for all the projects, right? So, right. Uh, so that's a, it's as simple as this. That's it. So when I was preparing the demo, wow, it's it's really simple, right? Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to do it in command line and bring in your own version of uh, uh, DAC, FX, or SSDT version for your specific need, mm -hmm. or you want to host it in your your own private agent, then uh, uh, you can run uh, the same operation mm -hmm. using command line. Uh, we have a tool, command line tool, called the SQL package. Basically, these two tasks are doing the same thing. It's called the SQL package, that right. exe. But in this case, it's more like a, uh, you have control. Yeah, so, uh, so if you have really you know, extreme scenarios or things you just don't fit the standard template, you, yeah. you're not blocked, you can still set up this pipeline, but you have to know how to configure this exactly. command line based tool. Exactly. Cool. All right. So let's go to our application. And uh, it was uh, uh, the state, right, mm -hmm. before the change. And if I refresh it, there you go. Now it is a new state, which is a data, uh, dynamic data masked on emails. Without uh, changing any application code, it happened. And uh, without going through all the, uh, the like executing all the statements to your live database, you just change your source code file, right? Yeah. And change your SQL. Then yeah. your app reflects it in your in your exactly in your Q and A environment in this case. Exactly, it's cool. user, user acceptance. So yeah. this is the power of adopting state based and the database CI CD pipeline in your DevOps, mm -hmm. right? Practice. Yes. So so that's a basically the key thing that I wanted to demo today. And uh, as you saw, um, the using the uh, the SSTT and state based then uh, you can easily, uh, quickly, and efficiently adopt these DevOps you know, practice to your uh, current database development uh, the, the process. Yeah. And I call it modernize, the definition of uh, easy, quicker, and uh, efficient. And, uh, and sure. the good thing is that, note that SQL Server is only our DBMS in the market that supports solutions for both migration-based and mm -hmm. state-based, right? Cool. And migration-based approach, there are great tools uh, that can help going through those alter uh, the, the, the coding and the execution business. And in Visual Studio 2017, uh, Enterprise Edition, uh, the Redigate's Ready Roll is now included uh, uh, in that Visual Studio uh, Enterprise Edition. Mm -hmm. And it's a great tool that it, even it can uh, enable CI/CD pipeline as a uh, um, a part of your development practice. So at the end, it is a uh, kind of uh, your choice, which fits best, right? right? We, as Microsoft, we provide you which choices uh, based on uh, whatever your choice is, we provide you uh, full support on that one. Right, so if, you, if you're just a customer of Visual Studio, any addition, SSDT is there for you for the state-based. And exactly. then if you're an enterprise customer 2017, or if you own the license of Redgate for you know, your own purposes or some other potential tool out there in the marketplace at some point, yep. um, it just is going to be integrated for you uh, for those solutions. Right. Cool. So uh, if you haven't tried SSTT and Visual Studio Team Service based, uh, those are DevOps pipeline, CI CD, then try it today. SSTT is uh, fully supporting all editions of Visual Studio 2017. Today you saw that I demoed it on the community version of, community mm -hmm. edition of Visual Studio yeah, 2017. The, the free version yeah. of, our, of our product. Right, exactly. Yeah. And VSTS is also free for small team with the U, uh, five users. Mm -hmm. And the great unlimited uh, features like a uh, repo and the work item uh, management that I started uh, in my demo. And uh, it has uh, uh, one private agent, that's great. And uh, one hosted agent with uh, uh, four hour use per month for free. That's awesome. And, and if so you, you find have flexibility it really, and it's free. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, you tried it out today. It's all you can just start without the, you know uh, adding any cost on your side. And then yeah. uh, if you like it, then, then you can go into a VS Studio Team Service uh, paid version for your real, you know, team project and kind of stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So you got some resources for folks to take a look at here. Yeah, I have. Uh, if you uh, want to find out more about what is DevOps, there is a great uh, uh, um, the keynote by uh, Brian Harris, uh, Shift Left Concept uh, as part of the Visual Studio 2017 launch keynote. Yeah, very, so very fresh video, <laughs> very recent. Yeah, exactly. 
So uh, I have uh, uh, listed uh, the useful references here, mm -hmm. so you can just uh, go and find out more about um, uh, all about SSDT, all about the database CI/CD, and then even have a database CI/CD tutorial uh, uh, posted on my blog. So uh, you can go and then follow just step by step. Then uh, you can do exactly the same thing that I, I did today uh, in your own environment. And uh, and if you are uh, Mac and Linux developers. Then uh, the CI CD part is not there yet, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have a great tool like MS SQL extension for VS Code. So you can get started in uh, developing uh, your application and database on Mac and Linux as well. That's awesome. Yeah, and we, you know, we're, we're trying to bring you know, the goodness to every, every platform where we have developers and right. VS Code runs everywhere. So that, that's awesome. And then Visual right. Studio and Windows has all this already. Yep. up and running and uh, I'll be sure to put all these uh, notes into into the show description so folks don't have to worry about memorizing the, oh, the yeah, long URLs here <laughs> we'll, we'll get them posted and uh, you know, thank you so much for being on the show Eric. Uh, thank you for inviting us. All right well we'll be back with more uh, next Visual Studio Toolbox. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.